So as of right now, Kingsman the Golden Circle is sitting at 50% on Rotten Tomatoes. Which way am I gonna go? Let's talk about it. Kingsman the Golden Circle, when the Kingsmen are compromised, Eggsy and Merlin must track down another group of Kingsmen-like men, the Statesmen, from the United States to rebuild and save the day. And Eggsy has found love, and he must learn to balance love with the life as a spy. And Eggsy and Merlin discover that Harry may still be alive, but is he the same Harry? And evil drug lord Poppy has a plan to hold the entire world hostage. In disgrace, Agent Charlie wants revenge against Eggsy. And with so many spies and professional liars, there could be a mole. Who can you trust? Whew, it's a little bit exhausting just trying to describe the plot when so much is going on and it's told with so much energy. Let's talk about the good. So right off the bat, you have to talk about Matthew Vaughn and just how much style he brings to everything. Obviously, the wardrobe of the Kingsman and the Statesman, quite stylish. But beyond that, just he gives a flavor that's unique to everything, whether the world building in this crazy world of spies, the way he shoots the action, the actual choreography of the fight sequences and the action sequences, all of it just has his flair thrown on top of it. So all of the action, everything you're looking at is fun, interesting to look at, even to like a Poppy's layer out in the mountains. It's fun the way it's designed and it's a place that you like to go. And that's a good way to describe almost everything in this is that you, it's just fun to be there, whether the Statesman headquarters, whether that's just the different exotic locations they go to, the people you're with, you want to be around it. Along those same lines, you've got a great cast, once again, with some cameos sprinkled in there that I don't want to spoil for you, but, um, Taron Edgerton as Eggsy, just kind of establishing himself. Yes, this guy is the real deal. He's legit. He's going to be with us a long time as a leading man. But then kind of throwing in Jeff Bridges and Halle Berry. Just a ton fun batch of characters. And they give them plenty to have fun with, chew on, to just, once again, stylized, fun stuff going on. With all that said, that's kind of where the positives for me end, so we'll move into the negative. And while the style to everything that's being told is a lot of fun, the actual substance to it, most of kind of what's going on, I, I, I just didn't care for a lot of it all that much, specifically the way it all kind of ties together. Because while I liked The Statesman, it didn't feel like we got fleshed out enough. While I liked Poppy and her kind of world, it didn't feel like it got expanded upon enough. We liked the world of the Kingsman from the first movie. Didn't feel like we spent enough time in it before it kind of got compromised. And so all in all, it felt like there was so much going on that we didn't get enough of any of the things that we did like. We didn't get to explore it enough. The main plot line with Poppy and the drugs and trying to hold, hold the world hostage, we didn't get to dive into that because we're spending time over here with the Harry plot line. And then we're spending time over here with this whole thing about Eggsy's love life. And so just all in all, there's so many things going on that and a lot of them at their core had some sort of emotional resonance. Kingsman being compromised should be extremely emotionally resonant. The fact that maybe Harry's back should be extremely emotionally resonant. The fact that there might be a mole in the mix and betrayal, that should resonate with us. The whole world held hot hostage should be very exciting for us, but because we're skipping around between all these plot lines, none of them stick as nicely as you really want them to, which makes for a very frustrating watching experience. Also, one thing that just kind of made this movie very, just very odd to me is the way it decided to blend old characters from the first movie. So obviously in the first movie, spoiler for if you haven't seen the first movie, Harry dies. And they find a reason to bring Colin Firth back and theoretically Harry's back. But then there's other characters from the first movie that come back, but then they're written out of the script in the first 10 minutes of the movie. But minor characters from the first movie become like major characters in this one, like total throwaway characters suddenly are big parts of the plot in this film. And it was very odd that it was like, wait, what? Did these people not want to return? Were they only like, we'll give you one weekend to shoot? Like, why are they gone so quickly? And why are these people elevated up to like the big leagues? And why are we minimizing this character? And then we've got Harry coming back. Very odd mix the way they did all of that. And so all in all, very frustrating sort of experience. And then kind of one final negative on the movie 
its blend of the nastiness and the political incorrectness and just kind of woo, let's throw it to the wind violence of the first movie is kind of still there. And if you still get the nasty, like, ooh, that was too far since. While at the same time, it felt sanitized at parts. And some of the humor and the crassness of the first movie feels gone. Some of the violence of the first movie feels gone while still having little tinges of it. And just the, the mix of the two it felt like they, they got it just wrong. If they wanted to dial it back, like, oh, we went too far, let's dial it back. But then they would have one thing in it or two things in it. You'd be like, that was just nasty. And then in other places, they, it just felt like, why are you referencing something while dialing back the humor and the, the harshness of it? Very odd mix of the harshness and nastiness of the first movie that just seemed really odd to me. So overall, a very watchable movie, in a certain sense, a very fun movie, but a frustrating movie while you're watching it because you're just thinking, why didn't you just cut three of these plot lines out of it? Just to, maybe we don't have Harry come back or maybe we don't have this this whole love life plot line in it. Uh, maybe we just focus in on the drugs and we focus in on the statesman and maybe we don't have to blow up the Kingsman and stuff like that. Just it felt like too much going on. Nothing was as powerful and as resonant as it should have been because it didn't get the focus. So all in all, I think I'm going to land just one bump above Rotten Tomatoes on this one. I'm going to go a 5.5 out of 10. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but I'm kind of like, eh, it's not going to bore you, but it's not going to impress you either. If I'm being honest, this is a perfect example of a Blu-ray a Redbox rental. I said Blu-ray. I meant Redbox. This is a Redbox rental movie. If you like the first one and you're not in the rush to go out to the theaters or anything like that, if you get it at Redbox, you'll be like, yeah, that was worth the few bucks that we paid for it. If you go out to the theaters, you'll, you'll end up pretty frustrated by what you get. But how about you guys? What did you think about it? Tell me down below in the comments section. I'd love to get some discussion. Being that it's right at that 50%, and even the people I'm talking with, that seems like where they're kind of falling on it, of people being like, yeah, Anna, it was a ton of fun, but I'm not quite sure about the plot. Let me know where you landed, and if you loved the first one, or if you didn't care for the first one, let me kind of also know that, where you fall in the mix. Also, if you're new to my channel, please consider clicking that subscribe button. I do movie reviews, ranking videos, TV reviews, and the thing is, I don't want to just talk about movies. I want to talk about movies with you, so join me in the comment section, and thank you so much for watching.